and welcome to our UDL era video series. This is episode five. I am Carrie Morin and my colleague Dana Sheehan, and we are so, so, so excited today because we have the wonderful Lillian Nave from Appalachian Amazing. State University, yes. who has been our inspiration. So um, I will, I'll let you introduce yourself and then I will explain the little story behind it if you want. Great, great. Um, so yes, I'm a senior lecturer and the UDL coordinator at Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina. And I host this little thing called the Think UDL podcast. Uh, and we started back in December of 2018. Love so that yeah, it's very exciting. <laughs> One of my favorites. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I have to just back up a second yeah. because this is such an exciting time for us because you were our our inspiration. Wow. Truly were our inspiration mm -hmm. because we had the UDL conference here at Goodwin College a That's year right. ago mm -hmm. and you came to present and Dana and I sat in on your lecture and it was just absolutely fantastic. Wow. We absolutely loved it. You were the inspiration. We decided to come up with a video series and do the video series well, after that. It's because uh, Lillian said that she was doing a podcast mm -hmm. and I I was like, oh, I love podcasts. Well, we can't just copy her. We have to <laughs> do something a little, a little bit, bit different. <laughs> so yeah, and then it just it just kind of rolled into this. And then when we found out that we were doing the second conference, yes, yeah, and that was when we reached out to you and basically begged you if you were coming. To, super excited. Yeah, I was super excited. Yes. So so that was I'm glad absolutely to be here. wonderful, and we're so happy to have you here today. And we have to thank you for our special gifts. Yeah. We got some special special mm -hmm. gifts. Thank you, DL. It's Not a great everybody idea. Everybody has them. Not everybody so has them. Do. No pants. Yeah. And the best pens in the world. Yes. And the best pens in the world. Yes. Awesome. And I'll be taking notes. Yeah. Today. At the conference tomorrow. At tomorrow and yeah. today. That's right. Today. Um, <laughs> so thank you. So we could just get started, yeah. I guess. We could yeah. just jump right in. Um, we had a nice conversation with Lillian um, actually before we started recording all about the lessons that you were doing and the yep. things you were doing. And um, I'm just going to start with the same questions that we typically ask. So what drew you to UDL in the first place? Um, what drew me to UDL was actually having three very different children who learn very different ways. And um, I realized that what I had been doing in my teaching life uh, had been mono kind of channeled. Uh, I was teaching the same way um, to all of my students, not realizing that probably some of my students were uh, different. And different like the way my children are wonderful and different um, and needed to be engaged in different ways. And I had always been teaching the way I loved to learn. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was totally appropriate. <laughs> and um, it, it worked in, in the system, you know, and it, and it continues to work. But then I realized that I was leaving students out. So uh, just because of my experience with um, how I saw three people who lived in my house were, were learning differently. I moved into what's called first year seminar mm -hmm. from my art history uh, department or the art department. And it was a, a whole new ball game. So the fact that I was uh, have three teenagers uh, right now, and um, that I moved into teaching first year students and a wide variety of first year students, uh, it all just kind of clicked for me. And I thought, I need to start doing things differently. And when I did so, it was also a lot more fun. Have you noticed now that you are doing almost no lecture, that when you sit in something that is a lecture, that you drift yes. really easily now? Yeah, so yeah. I have a I've hard been time. That lately. <laughs> yes, I have a hard time, and I realize now that's totally what my students are, are yeah. having a hard time too. Um, so I had read, I don't know the study, but read about attention spans being around 20, 25 minutes yeah. um, or around kind of your age somewhere around there is, what, is what's good. So my students are 18 to 20 years old and I, and I have a 50 minute class. So I feel like every day about halfway through the class, they need to get up, move around, switch groups, do something different mm -hmm. um, or else I've lost them for like the almost the whole second half of the class, um, but we usually are doing, uh, well, we're usually doing small group, um, peer learning, uh, and a term that I learned recently is this constructivist thinking. So they are constructing their learning in the class, and I had 
I hadn't heard of it. Apparently I was doing it and a friend of mine told me, you know, oh, that's that's what this is. Oh, really? It has a name? Okay. <laughs> have you noticed, because this is a first year seminar, so they're all yeah. freshman students. So have you noticed that after they've learned how you run the classes, have they come back to you or have other professors come back to you and said, what did you do? Or how can you incorporate this there? Or how do I get my other professors to do this? Or um, did you hear any of that? I've had some really good feedback. Um, I had a student uh, last year, um, that and I have you know like 60 to 80 students and I'm only telling you one <laughs> but, um, but but this was the the most impactful for me is a student who told me in the beginning of the semester that she had ADHD and that she was struggling in several other classes that were super lecture based including an art history class like the one I used to teach so yeah. um, and would come before class and after class and just say what can I do? Like what I, in this other class, I'm, I'm really struggling. Um, and I would try to give her, you know, things that I knew about or, uh, or ways to talk to the professor or, or things like that. And, um, about two thirds of the way through this semester, she came t to me and said, you know, this is the one class that I haven't had to use my accommodations. It's a life changer. I, yeah. I have found that most of my students that have, we call it accessibilities here, um, most of the students that have that, they don't use them in my classes anymore. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I've just gotten used to just being like, okay, great. Yeah, here's yeah. that letter. Thank you. We'll just <laughs> right. talk about it as the semester goes and they don't need it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's for the most part. Mm -hmm. So That's what's so amazing about U UDL yeah. is it, it does, it evens the playing field and mm -hmm. everybody has that chance to learn. And I, I, I didn't entirely realize it until well, I had that student say, right. I didn't even need any of these things. Right. And then all of a sudden you're crying and you're like, right. you gotta walk away. <laughs> yeah. So we'd also like to talk about her plus one. Actually, as we oh, were yes. we were talking um, before mm -hmm. we started recording, we were talking, you telling us about the great um, art history annotated yeah. bibliography assignment. So if you want to yeah. elaborate on that. I would love to. Um, this is a class I've had so much fun with. Um, it's a class I've been teaching for five or six years. This is my sixth year teaching it. So every semester, it's like, oh, I'm going to add something different. I'm going to add something different. So when I started teaching this class, I was pretty horrible at teaching it, right? Because it's the first time you teach it. You're like, <laughs> yeah. not so good. Um, and then about um, two years ago, so three years into the class, I came up with this assignment because I realized that students were not getting what I wanted them to get or what, what they needed to get. Um, so the class is called Art, Politics, and Power. It's about Nazi looted art in Germany in so, World War II. It's interesting. So, yeah. I love it. And so each year I was trying something new and different yeah. with this class. And um, so the, the first change I made is not having an end of the year research paper. They have to do a research assignment. Mm -hmm. And I thought, um, I don't want to read all those papers and I don't think it's important that they have to write it. They, it's important they have to communicate it. Mm -hmm. And with art, it's important that we see it. Yeah. And so all of these students make a documentary film. Oh, what a great idea. <laughs> it is so cool. It's between I five and it. 10 minutes. Yeah. And the film is about their work of art because there are still like hundreds of thousands of works of art on paper and, mm -hmm. and paintings that are lost or stolen or we don't know exactly where it should go like does it go to an heir that it was stolen from or, or does it belong in a museum or things like that so that's what they research so um they uh but they have to do the research to make the documentary film and they've never done this before um, and it's kind of tough um, so i have them do their first step is an annotated and evaluative bibliography. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of them, about 80%, it's the first time they've ever done something like this. So I came up with um, an assignment and I only changed the assignment um, to be as um, uh, kind of uh, linear or, or specific yeah. um, as I am now about a year ago when I learned about the tilt method that uh, splits the assignment up into purpose, task, and criteria. Okay. So it gives the students what the purpose is, um, and this is for them to get good information. Um, and they have skills, goals, and knowledge goals. Um, and then the task, and that lists each part of the task. And the big part that I, I was seeing trouble with is they had to write two paragraphs about each one of the sources. And their source paragraphs were uh, didn't really get it. 
So that was the part I wanted to work on. And then the criteria was like what I would be grading them on or assessing them on. So when I found out or saw that they weren't really getting that two paragraph part, I came up with the, are you on track for your research? Yes. Which I was super excited yeah. about. Now you have to tell them yeah. what track stands for. Yeah. Okay. Track. So are you on track <laughs> in your research? <laughs> because the T-R-A-C stands for timeliness. So when was your source written? Relevance. Is it relevant? How is it relevant to the project? Authority, which is the um, author's cre- the author's credentials or believability. Mm-hmm. And then credibility, which is the source. Like, did you get it from some web blog or did you get it from a peer reviewed journal? You know, that sort of stuff. And they didn't, they weren't getting that part. So, um, I decided that, um, the learning didn't have to stop at the due date, Mm -hmm. that the learning, uh, continued after they brought it in. So I made the day they handed in that annotated bibliography, a workshop. So we love the, that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's a peer review. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah, that, 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 that was a great idea. It's wonderful. It, yeah. it was. It was really revolutionary for for me and helpful for me mm-hmm. because then I had the students if essentially telling me what they learned mm-hmm. by doing this and learning what they were supposed to do if they didn't get it the right, first time. Right. And then the last section of this is they get it back and they do a self-assessment. Mm-hmm. So I tell them I don't grade them on what they bring in at the beginning of class. I grade them on what they've created by the end of class and then they hand it in. Mm-hmm. And so they have the chance to make up for the deficits that they brought in at right. the beginning. So they're learning awesome. the things I want them to learn. Um, they just might be learning it from their peers, mm-hmm. not from me. And that's that was just, totally okay. Right. I'm so glad that you gave this to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I can't can wait. Use it. Yeah. yeah. Open. Yeah. Yeah. Open for everyone. Yeah. Oh, OER. Um, Open Educational o- Resources. O- OER, yeah. Lillian Nave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah. And I'll often give, um, write something on the whiteboard right before they leave and say, did you, do you know more now about, um, about uh, library resources Mm -hmm. than you did 50 minutes ago, yes or no. Mm -hmm. And it'll, you know, most likely be about 20 out of 22 will say yes, Yes. that they learned something really important about that information literacy goal that we have. You know, it's been really wonderful. I feel like we've just been hanging out with you for the last (laughs) however long. It's been such a wonderful conversation. And not to do a little crossover here, but two lucky ladies might be on the Think UDL podcast eventually. Yes. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Listen to to her podcast. You have to listen to this podcast. It's fantastic. Um, But thank you so much for taking the time to come and meet with us and telling us about this wonderful plus one. Yeah. Yes. Anybody's welcome to use it. And I'm I'm super excited to share it because it's been really helpful. For, for me and our first year seminar program. Nice. Perfect. And thank you so much for coming to Goodwin College. And, and yes. Well, I love being so. here. You guys <laughs> are awesome. I love your view. I love this place. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. The view yeah. behind yeah. these is a really cool it the is. Connecticut yeah, River. It is. It's it awesome. is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. Because I like to paddle. I like canoeing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes mm-hmm. Next time we'll have to invite yeah. her in the summertime. Then. Yeah. Yes. Maybe that could be our new thing. It's like you yell in a, a canoe. Yeah. Yes. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Multiple means. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for our next crossover episode. No. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, my God. Thank, thank you. Thank you so, you so much. much for thank coming. You. Thank you.